Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be making some Easter cards. I'll be using the um, old Rugged Cross Stamps and Dies and then the He is Risen Stamps and Dies. That's the sentiment uh, portion of this. So I wanted to stamp out my images. I knew I wanted to use a colored background, but I really wasn't feeling colored pencils, which is kind of the best way I know how to... Um, so because of that is why I decided I was going to use the dies. I laid out all my images here. I'm going to stamp these down in um, black. I ended up having to stamp them twice, probably because I've never used them before, if you can even believe that, um, because these stamps are like so right up my alley for my style. Um, but I have not had the opportunity to use them. So I used my little pressure tool to stamp them down. And like I said, I did stamp them twice. Um, and then you'll see at the bottom, like the little banner, we're going to talk about how to um, color that, how like we color kind of like draped or um, like swag type material. Um, so there's two of them there, but I'm using them as a sandwich. I'm going to sandwich my cross right in between the two of them. Um, and then old habits die hard with my CPR method. I can't help it sometimes. Sometimes I just, I feel like I need to do it. So we're going to get into this coloring and then of course we'll have story time a little bit later. I chose to color them um, purple because um, that just seemed to make the most sense to me. Here you can see that they have like the drape material that's meant to go back behind the two arms of the cross. So I'm, I'm just filling these in. I know that they're going to be a little bit darker. And then when these were drawn, you can see that there's kind of lines that are already there. We're going to extend those out. Um, we're going to create um, some darker shadows and some highlights so that this really looks like it's kind of um, a real draped fabric. So with the pieces that go behind, um, obviously anything, anytime two objects lay on top of one another, there's going to be a shadow. And at any point where two objects meet, there's going to be a shadow. So the parts that are behind also have kind of like some creases or some draping in them. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just kind of extending those lines. I know that it's going to seem a little bit overwhelming, especially when you're filling in empty space um, like you are in the middle here, but just continue the same line that's already drawn there. So just follow that out. The other thing you're not going to want to do, see here on this right hand side how my two lines are the exact same, like they are so matchy matchy, they're totally parallel to each other that's not natural. <laughs> it's not a way a natural line goes. So you're going to want one to be out more extended than the other, um, what, however long you decide to make them. And then you're also going to have to draw, and I almost always have to add this when I'm doing the this particular type of coloring. In the bottom, there is a little like U shape. Um, Right above that, you're also going to want to have some darker uh, lines because that's where all of the fabric is kind of sitting. That's its lowest point, so where its heaviest weight will be. So typically that's where the darkest color will be. Also with your darkest color, because you know we go lightest to darkest and then darkest to lightest, with your darkest color, you don't need to add a ton. You really, really don't. Be very careful here so that you don't get too much dark. You need it to create your shadows, but you don't need a lot of it. So if you're worried about being heavy handed, I am heavy handed. So there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but I have to compensate for it. And that's why I start with my lightest color. If you are worried about being heavy handed, you can always go in and add more. It's much more difficult to take it away. So just do a, like a little little line. That's it, a thin little line. And then if you feel like you need more dark, again, you can always go back and, and put it where you feel like it is missing. This particular technique kind of looks like a crazy hot mess um, until you get to the last step. So like I told you before, lightest to darkest, darkest back out to lightest. And with my VO4, which is like my second or my first midtone, I am going to start filling in some of that middle section. 
but I still need to leave some areas for the lightest color. And with the lightest color, I'm just going to go over everything. And that is what brings it all together. I promise you, it looks wild and crazy. But once you put that lightest color all over everything, that's when it all comes together and you can really see how that draped fabric looks. I colored the other one off camera because I did the same like technique, everything the same way. And this applies um, any sort of creases. So if you're coloring like a skirt, um, if you're coloring curtains, um, you know, just really any kind of fabric that you want there to be some movement to, you can use this kind of crease technique with the um, following those lines and extending them out. For the crown of thorns, I really just added, I started with my darkest color this time. Why did I do that? Why did I switch my method? I switched my method because this area is so small, I didn't want to oversaturate it and have my markers bleed out into the white. Um, so I opted to start with the darkest, but I really just put down dots. <laughs> like I'm not making it up, I really did. Just little dots of the darkest color where those like where they would meet and where they're coming out from other parts because in order for this to have any dimension you have to have the highlights too both things need to be present the colors that you will see the most of are your mid-tones but for your image to have any depth you have to have shadows and highlights um this particular cross has the wood grain already drawn in it uh which is great and super easy and i love that for the larger one, I am going to draw the wood grain into it just with my markers. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't 100% love it the way that it came out, mostly because of the short arms. I wanted the wood grain to all be going the same way since I didn't have that line in between. And it really just looked like one piece. Um, and so that is why I chose to keep the wood grain running vertically um, I'm not sure that that was necessarily the best plan, but I did it. It was done. I was okay with it. If you want to learn more about how to color wood grain, um, outside of just what you see here, I do have a whole nother video on that. Um, so yeah, that's that. We're just going to keep color in here and then we'll, you know, get to the assembling. As far as story time, so today is the day before Easter, um, so we have, you know, I talked to you about that in the last video that we have some, you know, family plans for that coming up. Um, I also talked to you guys recently about possibly selling my cards and several of you asked if I would sell them online in addition to this um, store that I'm looking at. Um, so I will let you know that the majority of my Honeybee cards, uh, Melissa, the owner of Honeybee, actually asked me if I would send them to her and I am going to. Um... So I don't want to over, I don't want to overload her because I've been saving cards for, you know, years. <laughs> and you guys thought I was kidding until I posted that photo on Instagram last weekend where I was sorting all of my cards because there was so many, so many, so many. But at least now I've got them into categories. Um, but I did end up going to um, talk to the store that is in my hometown. And um, I do think that I'm going to give that a go. Uh, as far as like selling them in the store, um, I, I think that because people are going in there specifically for handmade things, um, I think we might have fairly good luck with it. Um, and I went in there and toured it and it was super cute and we got little candies and stuff um, that were like locally made. I'll probably buy some more when I'm there setting up my cards. I'm going to be honest with you because I love chocolate covered Oreos and they sell them for $3.00. And I cannot say no to the chocolate covered Oreo and I'm okay with it. I feel like it's an all right vice to have. Um, but so the way that they do it is you pay to rent the space and then um, like they have different priced spaces. And so they did have an end cap there, which I think would do very well with the cards, like having them right on the end. And um, my wonderful mother-in-law actually had some like the little picture plates kind of things like the little like they have plate holders you can put plates on them like decorative plates in your house or you can do pictures and she had a couple of them and so um i did buy some shelving off amazon but they don't fit it does it does not work uh so i gotta take that back which is a bummer but it's whatever um but i did get them all sorted and um so you pay for the space and then they take 
uh, you make 95% of whatever you sell and they get 5% to like cover the credit card transactions, which I think is fair. So we'll be doing that. Um, and she sent me a message and asked me if I could um, be into the store by, I think it was the 29th, 28th. I'll have to double check. Um, because they're having a local TV show. I, I didn't even know what it is, but apparently my mother-in-law watches it every day. Um, they're doing a piece on the store and I'm obviously she doesn't want her store to be empty, which I completely understand. Uh, so she asked me if I would try to get in there. So my game plan, um, this weekend is to, oh, cause somebody else here asked me, was it Sherry? Maybe had asked me how I store my, um, cards and I typically do store them as panels. I don't store them as full cards because I don't mail them. Um, so I have to put backs on them. And then I bought some envelopes and some of the, um, like clear cellophane bags with the sticky ends on them. Um, to like kind of package them all together and protect the card so that people who are browsing aren't getting, you know, chocolate cover Oreo fingerprints on my car, <laughs> on my cards while they're sitting in the store. Um, but then I got worried that like people wouldn't be able to read the sentiments inside. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick like a handful of sentiments that I use in the cards, um, and then stamp them on those little white labels, um, and then put that label on the outside of the card so that people be able to read the inside sentiment without having to open up the bag and put their fingerprints all over the cards. Let's go back to the coloring for a second. So here um, you saw that with the like the lily portion of it I actually used two uh, colors that are in the brown family um, because I wanted that kind of soft muted pink color and it worked really well for that. I also wanted to incorporate the purple because you guys know that I like when my cards match and I'm taking photos. I can't help it. It just is how I am and I'm okay with it. So basically what I did was with the coloring, I made up whatever I wanted. Yes, I did. Um, I'm pretty sure that those other pieces parts on this particular um, flower um, with like the flower bouquet um, I'm pretty sure that those are supposed to be leaves. I colored them purple. I don't care. I'm crazy. I'm out here on a wing and a prayer doing whatever I want. Over here on this cross here, I know, I know, I'm 100% positive that those long leaves are leaves. They're not meant to be flowers. Did I turn them into flowers? Yes, I did. Because I needed to find a way to add purple in there so that everything would match. So I just changed them into long flowers. Again, it's your card. Do what you want to do. Make it look how you want. I have a problem with things with cereal matching and it, I'm, I'm fine with it. So I chose to do some teals uh, with my purples and my pinks. And then, um, but you know, I like variation because I can't, I get things get too boring if they don't have a lot of colors. And so I'm bringing in the yellow greens for the rest of the um, foliage that's kind of in the background. So that's that. Um, other things going on in my life. Okay, so we're talking about the selling cards. So I'm not opposed to selling the cards online. And I know a lot of people do like Instagram auctions. Um, but I'm not really sure what the best way to do that. My biggest following is on YouTube. Um, though I do have a Facebook page and I do have an Instagram. But I mean, most people come to watch my videos, which I totally appreciate. Um, but so I'm not really sure the best way to sell the cards. So if you could share with me um, like a closed Facebook group or an Instagram auction, like how do you feel about either one of those? Um, I could also do Etsy, but Etsy takes a portion of each sale. And I don't necessarily know that that's necessary because I don't, um, I don't want them to be outrageously priced. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. So you tell me what you think. I'm open. You tell me what you've done in the past. Um, here, I'm just going to go ahead and put the dies on so I can run these through my Spellbinders Platinum to cut them out. Um, in this set, um, the Old Rugged Cross set, I really love the sentiments, but there is all there is a sympathy sentiment in there. And I think that that's probably the one, not that I wouldn't use this for Easter, obviously I do, um, but 
I think that that one, it, the, the sympathy one is probably the one that would get the most use. And I kind of love that it's in there because if you're a person who sends Easter cards, the set is awesome for that. But also, unfortunately, almost everybody needs sympathy cards at some point. And coming up with images for sympathy cards are so challenging. Um, so if you are not necessarily a person who wants to, you know, make it overly, um, overtly, I guess is a better word, religious, um, also try leaves. Like there's just some really good leaves set um, that are out there that are great for sympathy cards as well. So here I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to position these. I originally cut the um, the large flower to go with the other um, the cross that has the spray behind it, but it felt like too much. Um, I much preferred it, I'm going to show you here, with that particular flower set over the um, wood grain cross. I liked that a lot better. And then I learned that also I could put this little... Um, uh, banner of cloth over the one with the spray and I liked that too but ultimately I just decided that I was going to um, just come up with a different layout uh, for that particular one and I'm okay with it here I'm going to build these I'm going to put them together but I wasn't really positive about my sentiments yet so I'm kind of doing this before my sentiments so that it gives me a little bit of time to think um but yeah, so then the other thing, um, as far as sales go, however I end up selling the cards will probably also be how I do the mystery boxes. So my sisters came over last weekend and we put together a bunch of mystery boxes from product that I have. And it's new product, it's used product, it's new product, it's old product. People, that's where I'm at. I have so much product and I have to get rid of it. We worked all day long and barely got through a third of it. But enough that I have 25 of each price point. So for $25, you get, I said $50 worth of product, but there's way more than that in there. Um, same thing with the $50, you get $100, and for $100, you get $200. Uh, just because I was so worried about people feeling cheated. You know, I'm asking you to buy this site unseen, um, and I, I recognize that. And that's why it's so deeply discounted, because I do not have the time uh, nor the inclination, really, to go through each individual set, photograph them, and sell them individually. So they're super discounted so that, you know, I, I you would maybe be interested in buying them even though, you know, you're risking maybe getting something that isn't your style. Speaking of that, I tried to mix them up so that there would be different styles or different holidays, you know, things like that. So, you know, it's, there's not going to be just like a Christmas bag and then somebody gets it who, you know, is Jewish. That would be terrible. That would be worst case scenario. Um, but, you know, there are Christmas items in there. And so I tried to maybe include like two Christmas items and then the rest of it, a different um, theme or a different um, style. I, I tried to make them as eclectic as I possibly could. Um, but if you watch my channel, you know the products that I use. Um, you're going to know really like what my style is of giving things away. So I'll probably do the mystery boxes in that same way. I had several people ask me on Instagram how they could purchase one. Um, and I'm, I am open to, to doing that and getting those listed. I just have not figured out the best way to do that yet. So, um, my wonderful crafters, I am hoping that you will kind of, uh, lead me in the direction that I need to go, um, to see what will work the best. Um, so yeah, those are just some things that I have in the works right now. And um, yeah, in between all of the craziness that is regular life. Um, <laughs> so here I, tr I decided that I was going to do the white heat embossing um, for each one of the cards. I just kept it tone on tone as far as the sentiment. I knew that I wanted to um, use the dies to cut them out. I didn't really want to risk, um, you know, the white heat embossing on the background because I don't have that much colored cardstock. And so these are just scrap pieces that I had um, from other things like I have die cut that were large enough to house my sentiments. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the dies. I'm going to um, cut those out 
and then pop them up on foam, everything, foam all the things. Um, <laughs> just because I feel like it gives some extra dimension and especially when you have something that's very clean and simple as these cards are, um, which I'm not mad about. I, I think that especially like with the sympathy card um, or something um, like Easter that has such is held in such reverence for so many people, myself included. Um, I don't think that it needs to be crazy and overly done, um, especially in this particular style of um, illustration. So now that I have those there, like I said, I'm going to put the, the foam on top of it. And then um, really, I mean, I added some shimmers. Yeah, I did. Because, you know, I can't stop myself. I got a real problem with the glitters. Um, but then after that, like they're pretty much done. So I think, um, you know, it's fun to do the, like the bunnies and stuff like that. Obviously I got my kids Easter baskets. All of this, um, stuff is currently living in my closet. I have to do their baskets tonight. <laughs> um, obviously Caitlin, uh, will not, you know, be hunting down her Easter basket this year, but next year I'm pretty sure my girl's going to be crazy on the go. Um, because she's already, she's rolling over and then when she's rolling over, she's doing like the fake swim, you know, where she's just laying on her belly trying to swim with her arms and her legs. So it's not going to be too much longer, um, before we've got a little girl on the go and then we're going to have to, um, utilize the peck and play a little bit more, I think, um, where we can just kind of cage her into the, the family room, um, and keep her from getting all over into everything. Plus, we still have to uh, baby-proof all of the things. Fortunately, we still have most of that stuff from when Nathan was little. Um, so, like, the outlets and the... Uh, I think we do have to get the things for the doors, though. You know, the little baby-safe things for the kitchen cabinets. Um, and we have one baby gate because we had a puppy. Um, <laughs> well, Emma was a puppy. But, um, so we have one baby gate, and I think we got to get another one just because we have an open layout house. So, yeah, that's what we got going on here lately. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I do hope that you have a wonderful and blessed Easter weekend. Um, obviously as a Christian, this, um, Christmas is wonderful. Easter is also just as wonderful. This is the whole basis for our faith. Um, so thank you guys again for joining me. I appreciate you spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.